This presentation explores the third wave of fascination for other cultures in Europe. We will recall that Europeans were first interested in Orientalism or Turkish attire during the 17th and 18th centuries when dressing up in Turkish robes was a trend for fancy dress balls. And it is indeed the Turkish robe that inspired the garment that would become men's suits today. 18th century aristocrats wore Turkish robes to show their artistic and intellectual sensitivities. Then at the turn of the century, Napoleon inspired interest in Egypt during his military campaigns in North Africa. This third time around, we will rediscover the interest in Turkey, particularly Constantinople and the rest of the Middle East, but more importantly for fashion. Victorians will add Japan to this new zeitgeist. During the 1860s, train travel and steamboats make it possible for Europeans to travel faster and with more comfort. Thomas Cook, the famous travel company, begins taking tourists to Egypt and cruising them down the Nile. Now tourists could see for themselves what they had been reading about for nearly 50 years. Palestine became a tourist destination. One famous tourist was Mark Twain, who wrote a best-selling book titled Innocence Abroad about his adventures. The desire to travel in the Holy Land sparks a wider interest in Middle Eastern and Arabic decor, although it will not be carried out in a factual way. It became part of the tourist experience to have one's photo taken, or if the traveler were wealthy, a portrait painted in the local attire. And back home, Victorians adopted the idea of using potted palm trees as interior decoration under the influence of their Arab travels. Victorians were amazed at how individually Turkish and Palestinian men dressed, so unlike Europe's expectations for the male wardrobe. Mansions added smoking rooms or reading rooms decorated in the style of the Middle East or North Africa, invoking the custom of smoking a hookah. Even some modest homes tried to add a sofa or nook draped in Turkish rugs if an entire room was out of reach. Contact with Egypt and Indonesia introduced Europeans to an ancient form of furniture making. Wicker, or rattan furniture from tropical climates, captured the European imagination. It was lightweight, easy to paint, and malleable to create the undulating forms so favored by Victorians. Best of all, it was more affordable than elaborately carved wooden furniture, so wicker was widely embraced by the middle classes. Incidentally, Americans were far more familiar with wicker. It was produced in those parts of the colonies with tropical climates. It was considered a regional style in America, but during the Victorian era, it reached new heights. The culture that will affect fashion most during this era is Japan. The visual aesthetics of Japan influenced artists beginning in the 1850s, starting a movement called Japanism or Japonisme in French, a word that sums up the influence of Japanese culture and aesthetics on Europe. The general public learned more about Japan after three expositions brought artifacts and goods to Europe. The Vienna International Exposition in 1873 was a turning point. It was the first time the modern Japanese government participated with the express intention of attracting markets to export their goods. The government built an entire Japanese garden with an arched bridge and a full shrine, and they brought cultural treasures to display as well as goods to sell. Japanism swept through Europe and America. Japanese prints, craftsmanship, and textiles will have a profound effect on European painting, decor, and dress. Here we can see a direct correlation between a Japanese print and European painters. One such movement, Impressionism, has been called the first modern art movement, and it still remains popular today. 
Impressionist Claude Monet had managed to amass an, um, uh, an impressive collection of Japanese woodblock prints. But the kimono itself also captivated the European imagination. The kimono was a moving artwork in itself with beautiful fabrics and hand embroidery. Japan exported silk fabrics, but soon discovered that kimono were widely prized and earned higher market prices. The Japanese delegation to Vienna did some market research while in Europe, resulting in these quilted silk gowns. These gowns were manufactured in Japan for the European market as dressing gowns. Silk textiles and embroidery will have an immediate effect on fashion, incorporating the fabric itself into European dresses. In some cases, imported kimono were picked apart to make a dress. The kimono itself has an immediate effect on artistic and aesthetic dress. It is elegant without distorting the body with corsets. The kimono will influence women's wear from this point, and it will be an important element in creating the modern wardrobe for women, as we will see. Today's dog is the Japanese chin dog introduced to Europeans after the opening of Japan in the 1850s. Just as Japanism swept Western fashion, it only makes sense there would be a dog that matches the cultural zeitgeist too. And I have one more shaggy dog story to share. The Victorians are so fond of dogs, they begin a whole new genre of dog painting. And of course, Someone wrote a book about the history of these dog paintings. Why didn't I think of that? <laughs>